Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Overlay, a poker podcast brought to you today exclusively by Paramount Social Club. Brandon, tell us why we're only talking about Paramount today. Well, after three years of mulling around and talking about it, I actually got my ass down there and experienced the... Uh, the Texas, the, Texas... The Texas poker Texas, scene. Texas, No Limit Hold'em. It's weird that they call it Texas, Texas, No Limit Hold'em, because it's like... Texas No Limit Hold'em in Texas. You have to say Texas twice. I think that's how it goes. Is that not true? I don't know. I've never heard that before. Episode 60, part one of two, because part two of two is going to be the second half of episode 60, but we're going to release it in two different episodes. So this is for our Texas peeps will be the first part. And the second part will be for the Chicago peeps. And really what we're going to do in episode 60 is talk about the poker scene in Texas and then the poker scene in Chicago. But we're going to do it in two different episodes. So if you are one of my Chicago people and you don't want to know about Texas, although you're missing out, just skip to the next episode. Uh, Texas peeps, stay right here. You're in the right spot. because We're going to talk about Texas and Texas only and how awesome the poker scene is in Texas. Correct, Brandon? That was that was very nicely said. I feel like I lost you there first. I thought you no, hung, you didn't. It was just, I thought you, I thought you were just going to again. Come. I thought about it. I was getting another call right from like an eight five five number. I figured it's they the were going to talk about my extended warranty, and I didn't yes, need that. So it's the only place uh, on the planet where you and I are equals. So like it's like the only time I can't get mad at you for like hanging up on me, which would be cool. It's great. It is kind of great. Uh, so the text scene. We we did our first. Um, we did our first meetup game yep. in Texas last last Tuesday, a week ago today. You and I were both partying it up in Texas. And I want to do um, kind of like the red carpet scene of like how we entered the room and like the cool intro music that came on. And then we'll go even yeah. fur- we'll even go a further step back. And I convinced us to take the 6 a.m. flight because I had shit to do in Texas beforehand. So we took a 655. 655. Which is actually yep. kind of late for me. I normally take a 6 a.m. flight. So, like, for me, I felt like I got an extra hour of sleep. But, like, you texted me at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. You're like, this is the dumbest fucking idea we've ever had. Well, Why would I go this was, early? The problem was there was the national championship game on on the Monday. Oh, and that's right. You know me. I'm a little bit of a sports gambler. You are. And, you are. And I really and don't it was miss a really good game, too. Champ- yeah. And I don't like miss those games. So, well, I, I was very confused conflicted on the well i have flight. to be up by four to be to where i need to be and not miss this flight mm-hmm. but it's a close game at halftime and right. halftime was at like 9 30 right and i was really compromising my sleep with staying up to watch the game right and then you know i wasn't gonna bet on it and i was like you know what i don't care who wins i'm just gonna go to sleep and the next thing i know i had five thousand on a side so I was like, okay, I guess I gotta watch this game. Dude, I'm, I'm now I'm locked into this thing. <laughs> well, that's how it goes. You know, yep. you you think you're just gonna have an easy Monday night, just like, hey, let's just watch the first half of the national championship. Right. Watch Bama sleep by time. Watch Bama blow them out by halftime. Be like, fuck it, bedtime. That's it. We're done. But no, yeah, halftime score was like nine to six with five field goals kicked and, and no touchdowns. Awesome. I'm like, kind of awesome. Off. That is awesome. It's funny because on a football game that's a lot of defense, I find is much more entertaining than, say, like a perfect game in baseball, right? Perfect yeah, game in baseball, no. it's like it's Or even so a pitcher's boring. duel in baseball is boring. Yeah, like the kid in Mississippi State for the national championship in like the second, in one of the playoff games, either the, the, the semis or actual, the actual national championship, he, he had like a perfect game going through like seven and a third innings. And I was just like, I'm I'm so excited because it's my team and they're doing so well. But on the other hand, I'm like, this is fucking boring. <laughs> like nothing's yeah, happening. All the announcers were talking about, um, you know, how boring of a game it is because there's always, uh, you know, there's always offense in these games. All the final scores have been 30s and 40s, and you don't really get a. a uh, a defensive duel like that these days in college football and to see like nine, six and, and no touchdowns at halftime. For me, that's entertaining. The defense is flying all around. Everybody's pumped up. It's like tough to get a first down. You don't see that anymore. And so that's, and the announcers are like, Oh, this is not really a game for, for a lot of people to be entertaining. I'm like, no, this is entertaining for me. 
I, I like love watching it. guys struggle to get well, two yards is entertaining. I'm I'm a I'm a all or nothing guy. Like I want it to either be a forty five to forty four game where it's just an offensive just bonanza. Is that right, where whoever has the ball last is going to win? Kind of, score. and it's just like it's really cool. And or or I want to see what we saw in the national championship where it's nine to six. It's all field goals. Like. It's just a, a defensive dominant game. Like I'm cool with one side or the other. The, the ones I hate are the middle games where it's like 21 to like 10. Like that just kind of sucks. Like it's a lot of three and outs and punts, and then the next team goes five and out and punts. It just blows a little bit. But anyways, enough about football. So you stayed up late. We get on the flight. Six fifty five flight. Everybody Not bad, actually. No, it really wasn't bad, and it wasn't full, which is kind of cool because normally I always fly Southwest. And Southwest is typically known for being massively full. So it was kind massively of massively full. That's different than full. Like mass, like they booked 200 people for a 185 person fight. So like 15 ah. people at times, they're hoping 15 no shows so that they break even. And typically though, if they only get like 12 no shows then they got to boot three people off of the flight, it's great. I've been on the flights before where they came out and they're like, okay, we're going to need three volunteers or we're just going to pick three people at random. Jeez. Yeah, it's scary. It sucks. And they don't really give you very much, but it is what it is. Anyways, so we took the early ass flight. I got some work done. You went back to the hotel, uh, took a little nice little nappy. Shout out to the hotel for letting us check in at 10 town in the morning. No place, problem. Town Plaza, Town Plaza Marriott, right across the street from uh, it is the only 100% sponsored by Paramount Social Club. I can convincingly say that hotel and now Brandon is the shit. It's clean. It's nice. It's like a little studio apartment in New York City. New York City. It's great. It's so cool. Full it, kitchenette. Full kitchenette. I mean, you can and spend a real a week in there. and a real like refrigerator. Like not one of them little mini fridges that like sucks. No, like, you put like one fridge. diet coke in there. It's yeah. Great. Full fridge with a freezer. Yeah. I mean, I didn't use any of that shit. No, but I, mean, it was awesome. I have. I've used it in the in past and I'm there for like four or five days in a row. But anyways, all of that preemptively brought us to the first ever overlay meetup game which i would say was a huge success what would you yeah. say i mean i thought it was great it's pretty good i mean we got there at 7 30 they were supposed to start at eight and there was three or four call-ins i think that we, were on the list yeah and i think we were ready to it, poker players are the same no matter where we go um until they realize that the game will start early they always come late right like it's just the way poker players are brandon's been and i, and I have been doing promotions for poker for so long now that <laughs> we just understand it never fails you say 3 p.m and like even the most punctual person shows up at 305 like it's just yeah. they just know if you say 3 p.m it just it means 315 like that's just what it means it is what it is that's just they just show up at 315 and you can't get them to come earlier and there's nothing and, you can do until the point where I it gets so busy that they get ousted because the game started at 305. Then they start showing up early. But and until I think that it's time those comes, punctual people that showed up at 245 for a month straight yep. and then it never started at three yep. because all the other people were late. Well, then now they're like, they back it up. Correct. And they're like, all right, well, why am I showing it's up at 245? Awful domino and effect. They're at 305. And then all the guys that are showing up late. It's just a domino effect down the, down the way. But it was cool. We did end up starting the game, I think, six-handed at like 10 after 8, which is great. Yeah. Like 10 minutes uh-huh. for a poker game like from a scheduled start time. That's like the nuts. You're well within the grace period for starting that game. And it filled up, no problem, by like 8.30. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my impression of the game because I played in Texas for the last three years, so I, I I have a different feeling. It was a slower start. I feel like people were getting to know each other. It was like being on the dance floor and like you know you're just starting out with like some easy jazz, like boom boom boom. We're just dancing, right? No no grinding, no like break dancing. We're just we're just like regular dancing, just kind of like getting the grooves going. And then all of a sudden, like one pot happens where you get like a three way big massive pot pot pot. You get like a twelve hundred dollar pot, no problem, because all the pots are kind of simple in the beginning. Like the first two orbits, people are just feeling each other out, and then all of a sudden something happens, and the game just opens up, and it's fantastic. And I'm always waiting for that moment to happen, and it's it's always exciting. I was like, I, mean, I hope I I'm took, involved in it. I took the initiative on that one, just just so everybody knows, just to open up the game a little bit. Yeah, um, I put twelve hundred and three with the ten eight five five. You did, hearts. and that fucking ripped a hole in that day. <laughs> and, and then I ended up you went from straight. being 
Yep, you went from being a respected poker player from out of town, <laughs> semi-pro, <laughs> podcast professional, it's his game, like he's going to play good, he's not going to be all goofy, and it was like, and I think I started that action. I think I bet pot. You did. I, I isolated you out of it. Yeah, I think I, I, yeah. I raised, or no, I, I think, think you three bet. I I don't, whatever happened. This is my problem. This is why I don't vlog because you I put can't in like hundred and ten. I think and I, a couple other people flatted the hundred and ten, and then I made it seven hundred. Yeah, I think you I raised to thirty. Uh, you called another guy made it like a hundred. Yeah. I called the hundred, so I didn't. Th- I didn't four bet it. Or I raised that guy three bet it. I just called, got squeezed in the middle, and then you ripped it for like twelve hundred. You know, because there were like three other callers after me. Which rightfully you should have. You were the button, right? Yeah, I was the button. I was I just mean, trying to get sense. you out, and, and then but you then when I flipped up- over my hand, I was like, Ew. I was like, I got a straight, and yeah. like it was ten eight five five with three hearts, and I saw like three guys kind of look at each other. And yep. I was like, all right, well, mission accomplished. All, all I heard was this <laughs> door opening because now <laughs> the table floodgates are open here, folks. And after that, it was a phenomenal game, just like. Money going back and forth. We ran from what eight p.m. until like one thirty, one forty-five yeah, in the morning. Yeah, and it was really eight until one, like strong. So- like solid. If we game. lost a player, we'd get another. We player get a new from one. The yep. Game. And then I think at some point, like two, one guy got felted, and then uh, another lady like tripled up, and she just bounced. Um, and then, and then the two, couple, the two friends that knew each other, they both bounced. they both bounced, and then we went from like eight eight players strong to like. You know, like one, you then we had a guy show. We had a guy show up, mm-hmm. and then I put in eight hundred free in that hand, mm-hmm. and then he just played one hand, and he's like, oh, "Oh yeah, no, back. he played one hand. That was hilarious." <laughs> he's like, right, I'm gonna go back to I'm going back to one one three one two ROE because I'm not playing with you <laughs> sickos. But it was great. I don't remember any particular hands. I basically, I think I ran it up. My high point of the, I was in for a thousand, had to top off another five hundred. So I was in for fifteen hundred all day. The most I ever got it up to was like maybe eighteen or nineteen hundred. Yeah. And then I kind of at the end there when it got shorthanded, I really missed a. I just nothing really connected for me. Or it's worse, I connected on the flops but couldn't turn it into anything. Yeah, which that are is the worst. worst days. You're just calling off. 50 yeah, I'm like flopping wraps. I'm flopping flush draws. I'm flopping two pair. I'm flopping middle pairs. set. And I'm just like yeah. I'm not getting anywhere with this. I flop a set turn drills the. Uh, straight card and then the river hits a flush i'm just like i I know my jacks aren't good here anymore yeah i I remember that jack's hand i can't they're not good and they weren't i think i think he turned to straight and you river to flush so it was like i got beat by every i got fucking third place in that hand sucked that's plo though so anyways i broke about even i think after the sweats because they call them sweats in texas we had to learn that right yes sweats are the equivalent of flips flips are what we call them in chicago that's where you just Everybody gets dealt a hand. You put in X amount of dollars. I think our sweat was for 50 bucks at the end. There was just three of us. Um, and I'll give my funny joke there. It was 50 bucks, and you just each, everybody gets a PLO hand. You just rip out the, the board, and then you, you kind of no peaky. You go one card at a time and see how it goes. But it was great. I mean, we had a super fun time. I lost literally exactly $100. I was in for 1500 I cashed out for 1405 and I yep. gave the, the nickel to the cage. So I legit. B- uh, bagged, booked, tr- tracked, whatever the poker term is, a hundred dollar loser. Because in episode fifty nine, I did make one of my resolutions for twenty twenty two is that I was going to be more um, accountable for my playing and actually try to keep a record of my cash game plays. So I have two 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 sessions logged this year so far, and uh, they're both losers. <laughs> but hey, but little okay. losers. How did you do? Because okay. I know you did a little um, bit better. Yeah, I did. I was in for fifteen hundred. I never had. I just bought it for fifteen hundred to start, and I was chilling between like fourteen hundred and twenty five hundred the whole day, like up a thousand. Yeah, I would say so. Kind of, just like you were two thousand was kind of. I was up and then I lose a pot, but like I never really was down. No, I was like kind of up stuck. And then you were because you were up to like twenty five, almost three, and then you went all the way yeah. down to like fifteen. Correct, but I was just chilling, at, yeah, chilling between even and up a thousand. And then I lost that bomb pot where the kid went perfect, perfect. Oh um, God, that was awesome! Yeah, four four handed bomb pot. Um, How much was in that pot? 
That that was uh that was like a two K pot. Yeah, that's a good one. So that was a two K pot. That put me back to like even, and then I was kind of tilted a little bit. It was four handed, but like it was the kid that just beat me, a kid that really said he wasn't good and just wanted to gamble. And I mean, I kind of agree with that logic. He was fine. Yeah. He had fun, but like he was like. He's like, well, I'm definitely going to be calling every race forehanded, so I definitely want to be doing it when I'm on your left and not on your right. So he moved to my left, but like, it's whatever. Like, I don't care. I mean, he is right. I am raising ninety percent of the pot, so you might as well do it in position Correct. instead of out of position. Why? So, why call the ten dollar pre flop, you know, straddle when you could just wait? You know. Yep. Yeah. So he moved over, and then we played forehanded for a while. Mm-hmm. And then you went to the bathroom. Actually, I, did. I think we were playing five. Were we five handed or forehanded then? We were four. Uh, we were four handed. Okay, I think we it lost the guy. I ha- I couldn't wait any longer. I had to go pee and then go ahead with the story. I, yeah, I, we actually might have lost a guy. Might have left while you I were. I think he felt it. Yep, like right yeah. when I. Yep, he was all in. So I ran to the bathroom thinking it would oh, take yeah. longer. I stacked him too. And you I stacked forgot. him. I got. You I got stacked him off too. that guy. Go ahead. Yep. Um. He's like he got aces. I'm like no, I got a pair of fours. And he's I'm like, no, 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 really, I do. And I ended up making like two pair. Yep. And he had kings. Yep. Anyways, all true. Uh, so I stacked him. And I was back to about a little over 2,000. And then we played four-handed for a bit. And then the kid that got me with the bomb pot for 2,000, mm-hmm. I mean, I just coolered the shit out of him. It was four. I mean, it was four-handed. It was actually three-handed. Three, because three, I, I was in the bathroom. The I missed this hand. But now tell us and what it, happened. It was 10-8-5. Uh-huh. And I had 10-10-8-7 for top okay. set. So I top set of 10s, the nuts. But it was 10-8-5 with two diamonds. Right. And there are a lot of drawing cards out there. And I think it was twenty dollars um Pretty three flat. ways, so sixty bucks in the pot. Mm-hmm. And he he bet yeah, this is exactly what it was. He bet sixty, just full potted it. And then I made it two hundred. Because there's a lot of draws. You want to protect your hand. I for just, sure. I mean I have top set, but like half the deck is a bad turn card for Correct. me. And when I say bad, I mean makes better hands than I have. Right. And to my surprise, he just made it 660. Which he rips is it again. Yep. He pots it again. And then I'm like, well, this is kind of a crossroads. I was like, I don't really know what to do. I didn't know if he ran it twice or not. Like, I didn't. Well, and, I mean, I was like, it's three-handed. I, he's probably got to draw. But, like, what am I going to do? I mean, again, I was like, I can flat, wait for a safe turn, and then get it in. But I was like, all right, screw it. Like, this is it, I guess. And I just potted it all in. Or, yeah, 18, 19 whatever 2000 sure effectively all in right and then he stuck in his 2000 so it was like a 4k pot and he had a set of eights with a flush draw yep so it was set over set but he had the backup flush draw with it yep and he was like you got tens i was like yeah didn't man. he have a gut He's shot like too this. no no Did i had turn the a gut, gut shot? shot oh you had a gut shot yeah whatever anyways um whatever so he had the flush draw on a set. Turn was a seven of diamonds making his flush. And I had, it was, yeah, and I had an eight and a seven on the hand. Anyways, he turns the flush, but then the river was another seven and it board paired. And then the second ran, run out ran out like brick, brick, and I made a straight. But, I mean, I didn't need it. But he didn't hit his flush and he didn't hit his eight. So I just full scooped it and you kind of showed back up in the bathroom and you're like, whoa, what happened here? Game's and over. That kid was Game's down. walking over and I was like, ah, I guess we're doing a fifty dollar sweat for sweat. uh for And the best was money. he goes, Whatever you guys want to play for. And I think I yelled out a thousand. No, no, I was like, Don't I was like, Don't say that. He, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. He goes, <laughs> Ah, whatever you guys want. I was like, A thousand and before I could get it out, you were like, Hold on. Let him choose what he wants to play. And the kid's like, oh, I was thinking like 50. And I was like, 100. I automatically try to go up to like a little bit more. I thought 100 would be the number, but it was 50. He oh, had wow. an odd 50. He did. And I had an odd 52 because I had 1455. Had it worked yeah, out. It was you, fine. But I think all in all, it was a great turnout. We had a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed playing. I think you really enjoyed playing uh, Texas poker I mean, in general I, the only thing i have to say is that like even when the game wasn't good it was still good yeah like and, and i don't know how to describe that but like when games are bad in chicago like they're actually right. bad it's like like people aren't even seeing flops for the 15 to the 20 they're just straight folding and like Correct. it folds to the button and the guy's like well my hand sucks i fold you guys can chop right like i felt like there was kind of nitty it never gets nitty right. down there 
even even the tight guys are willing to call 20 pre-flop Correct. with a mediocre to decent. You used a term that I haven't heard of in a long time. It was like called like fit or flop or something something like that. Yeah, fit, fit or fold. Fit or fold. What does and that that's mean? Kind of the fit or fold. It's kind of like they're willing to put in twenty dollars pre-flop and then kind of play nitty on the flop with right. like they they either fit. They don't like hit a massive draw or so drill pull. the flop, then they just go away and you're down. You go from eight players to two players basically on every flop. But that still makes for a good game. Like it does, because a lot of people are just going. to Most times you you you, you fold and then you get all those twenties in there. It's great because I mean, in Chicago, when the game's bad, everything's going two to four ways to the flop. The initial razor, maybe one guy with a solid hand, the button, and the big blind, and that's it. Here, it's like the limp train starts, and you don't really have to worry about somebody three betting unless the limp train actually happens in Texas, where it's a waterfall effect of call, 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 yes. call, call. And sometimes and that really doesn't happen so much in Chicago. It, it it doesn't because everybody's afraid of what you did in the hand that I just talked about, where you had like the ten eight five four, and you know I make it thirty, get a bunch of callers, one guy raises, and the next thing you know, you get, out. and yeah. then one guy just goes, all right, pot, I'm all in, and you go, it's just all this dead money. Well, people are afraid to put in money that they're, you know, it's like, well, I really want to call another seventy dollars. And knowing that somebody's probably just going to make it like twelve hundred, and then I'm and then I'm never calling twelve hundred. But like in Texas, I feel like the that squeeze play doesn't always happen, which was great. So maybe it doesn't. The, it doesn't always happen unless somebody actually has a hand, which is correct. good. It seems like a lot of like it's easier the limp train. I like it. Um, anyways, it was a great time in Texas. I think it's something that we're going to continue to do. Um, I also wanted to mention just for our Paramount peeps hanging out there in Texas, a big thank you for coming out. I think next time we will 100% get two tables of PLO going. Maybe even I'll convince Brandon to play No Limit, but neither one of us are really No Limit players. So I think from now on, the the um, the meetup game of choice is just going to be a PLO game. So it's just more fun. I want to play that. I don't want to play No Limit. It's not as much fun. We don't no, need I'm him. not going. I, no, you don't need me. I thought you were just going through your promo. We don't need him. Uh, want to make sure that you, you guys... for the PLO game. Yeah, PLO game was awesome. I'll be back. Uh, let's also do a quick promo shout out for the Paramounts. Um, they are now adding a second stack tournament to the month. So the first Saturday has always been the stack tournament. It's a massive stack tournament in Texas. They get over 100 players in the eighteen to $21,000 price range for the prize pool. Um, for a hundred and twenty dollar buy-in, there are add-ons and bonuses and other shit they have to do, but it's great. It's a massively big tournament for a pretty reasonable buy-in for a one-day tournament. Now they're adding in a second mega stack tournament on the third Sunday of the month, which is going to start in February. So third uh, Sunday in February will now be the hundred eighty dollar mega stack tournament, fifteen k guarantee. It's massive. Not only on that, and you guys, you guys thought the stack was good. Oh my god, mega stack. Mega stack. It's truly, Ooh. it's truly named. Like it, it works out well. It's really an awesome tournament. Um, they did it in January, that first Sunday of this year, twenty twenty two, just a couple weeks ago. They had like one hundred and forty something players. Like, it's amazing. It, it, it the price, and rightfully show it, it should, it should get that many. It it's, should get more. Honestly. I mean, it's. It's a, it's just, it's a really good tournament for a one day tournament. You got everything you could ask for, and it's great. Um, last thing for promos in Texas, besides the meetup games that we're going to be doing on a much more regular basis, you got now two stack tournaments that you can play first Saturday and the third Sunday of the month. 10k and 15k guarantees for a very reasonable buy in. There's, they're also doing, um, a tournament of champions. Tournament of champions. Every three months, they're doing a points list. You earn points for playing. You earn points for uh, finishing in the top five five of every tournament, um, and it gets you into a free roll tournament. But the nice thing is, if you didn't get in the free roll, you can always buy a seat into the free roll. It's just a tournament of champions. It's not really a free roll. I shouldn't say free roll. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. I mean, you get a free seat into that 5K one day tournament, hundred dollar buy in. I mean, it's dope. It's dope. It's great. It's great. Free Par- money. Free money is always good. Um, the nice thing is um, you're going to get that free seat if you finish in the top on these points list for Paramount. But not only that, um, this is like my my infomercial time frame. Not hey, only I'm that, lying. Paramount is the only poker club. Only. And I do not use that term lightly. I, n- I don't say things like the only 
club in Texas, to my knowledge, 100% in Houston, maybe in Texas, we're the only club that does multiple tournaments every single day that they're open. Now, granted, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're only open in the evening, so it's only one tournament. But Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, two tournaments every day. So for a tournament of champions, tournaments promo for tournament players that want to play tournaments in Texas, especially for a reasonable buy-in, I mean, Paramount's the place to be. So that's all I'm going to leave it on there for our Texas-specific promo edition of the Overlay, a poker podcast. What do you think, Brandon? I love it. I well, mean, everything ahead. early is bigger in Texas. I'm just the like games the, so the room and the room was so big. I yeah. was impressed with the size. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I mean, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I know. I can't help myself. I'm immature. The size. Ha, ha, ha. Well, thank you as always for listening. Make sure you shout out to the GM, Mark, if you are there and say, hey, I listened to Ken and Brandon and I want to know when the next meetup game is and only Mark will tell you unless you listen to the podcast or you follow us on Twitter, which you should probably also do. But thank you for listening. Brandon, send us out with a big Texas yeehaw. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm definitely losing you. But farewell, everyone. Shout out to Posey. Oh, yeah. Posey's Posey's the best. Follow him on TikTok. Find his TikTok page. I I, uh, find his TikTok page because I'm definitely on there last week. Oh, it's so good. That guy's awesome. That's awesome. Shout out to Posey. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.